Hi, in this video we've got some new PCBs from JLC PCB and this is another little module for the lighting project and this time it's the RGB controller PCB. So these have got three channels on it for driving RGB LED strips and things like that. Um, so for example this sort of generic RGB strip which is designed to run from 12 volts and what you have at the end here somewhat counterintuitively is the black wire is the positive supply and then you've got the cathode for the LEDs so the green red and the blue so you apply a negative to the green red or blue or all of them or any combination to illuminate the LEDs and this tape has got everything that's needed inside it to drive the LEDs so you can see we've got some current limiting resistors and they're sort of wired in groups of three LEDs uh, to try and reduce the dissipation in any kind of driver circuit as far as possible. So these don't need a DC to DC driver circuit. What you can just do is either drive them directly from 12 volts, or in my case, what I'm going to be doing is driving them with a PWM signal, which is buffered by this PCB. So here we have the schematic for this PCB. And if you watch the other videos in this series, you'll know that the components on the left hand side here are common to all of these modules. So we've just got some status LEDs, some supply bypassing, the connector that goes onto the main board, and then some resistors which just tell the main board which module is plugged in. The actual bit of circuitry that's of interest is this simple bit of circuitry here, which is the drivers for actually driving the LED strip. So the way this works is we've got our PWM signal coming from the main board being fed into these three nodes here. We go through a series resistor which just takes off the high frequency edge of the PWM waveform just to reduce the emissions a little bit. It also reduces the power consumption slightly because uh, we do have some capacitance on the gate here and if we drive it without the resistor in series, we get quite a high peak current going through here every time we turn the MOSFET on. So it just reduces that slightly. We've got some pull down resistors. These are written as 10K resistors, but they could be anything up to one mega ohm with these MOSFETs. And that's just while the main board is initializing, it just stops the MOSFETs from floating up and turning on. And then we've got our N channel MOSFET. So the way these work is when you get a 3.3 volt signal coming from the main board, the MOSFET turns on and pulls each of these three nodes individually down to ground. So that provides our low side switching for the LED tape. We've got our common ground here on pin 5, so that's our ground reference. And then on pin 1, this is where we put in our 24 volt or 12 volt supply. So this isn't supplied by the main board, although it could be tagged off the main power supply. Um, I've given some flexibility here so that I could drive this with 6 volts, 3 volts or anything up to uh, 48 volts into pin 1 and then that goes out to drive the LED strips and it's just needed on the PCB for these flyback diodes just to protect any back EMF from damaging these MOSFETs. So although I've intended this as an LED driver, there's nothing inherent about this circuitry that is uh, specific to LEDs. You could drive any load any DC load um, that um, you desire that doesn't need any mechanical switching provided by relays so we could switch fans or um, you know pumps anything that we wanted to with these outputs here. In terms of the MOSFET selection there's not a huge amount to differentiate between the different MOSFETs that we could choose so these have a SOT223 package on the PCB which is a really common footprint for MOSFETs and the only two specifications that we really care about for this design is the maximum current that the MOSFETs can switch and then also potentially the on resistance of the MOSFET. So that's the resistance when you've got the MOSFET turned on. Obviously if the resistance is too high we start to get quite a lot of power dissipation in that MOSFET. Now on this particular design because we potentially could have up to 12 channels of PWM we haven't got that many hardware PWM channels on the microcontroller. So we're going to be driving this with a software PWM loop, which means that our PWM frequency is going to be relatively low because we have to service that in an interrupt routine. In this design, I think I've probably aimed for something at around 250 hertz. So we don't have to worry too much about switching losses. And consequently, we don't need to worry too much about the gate capacitance of these MOSFETs. 
Right, so I've got all of the components ready to start the assembly. So we're going to start with the resistors first. But first of all, what I'm going to do as we normally do is just put a blob of solder on each of the pads. Right, so that's the PCB all soldered up and it was nice and quick really because uh, there's not a huge number of components on here. So I've probably only been soldering about 10 minutes at the most. And as an interesting aside, I received this air quality monitor from Banggood uh, under my request because I've been thinking about getting an air purifier for the lab. Um, I do have quite a few windows in the lab so I can open the windows and get fresh air in here but at night time you don't want to attract all the flies and so I've ordered a air purifier so we've got an air uh, a Xiaomi air purifier coming from Banggood and this has arrived earlier than that it arrived around a week ago and I've had this sitting in the lab and these numbers have basically sat just at one the whole time so I wasn't sure whether this was working properly but now that I've just been soldering, and despite this being a metre away from the soldering bench, we're now up at sort of 63 micrograms per metre cubed of particles PM2.5 sized. And, um, you know, so this is saying that we've got a moderate air quality and technically at sort of ex prolonged exposure to these particles at this kind of level can be potentially harmful for your health or respiratory uh, system. Now there's a little button on the side here and when you press that it shows those three figures which we saw on the previous screen but it also shows the particle count of various particle sizes and the 0.3 and 0.5 are the only ones that sort of gave any readings in the lab so they were sitting at about 300 and this one was at the low 20s I think so we're getting some relatively high readings here and it's quite interesting we'll take it apart um, shortly in another video but we've got this little module here which has a light source in it along with some optics and it can use that to determine how many particles and the particle sizes so yeah we're going to take this apart in a future video but just i thought it'd be an interesting aside um, and i'll follow up when we get the actual air purifier itself right so i've just about finished writing the pwm routine for the microcontroller and I think this is the best way of doing it. So basically we have a time base, so that counts from 0 to 255 and then rolls back over to 0. We've got an array which has the buffered values of the PWM values. So the reason that we buffer it is because if we modify the values directly, then you can get glitching when you're changing the value of the PWM value. And then all we're doing is basically if the PWM value is 0, then we set the output to 0 so the output never turns on. If it's less than the PWM time base, that is the time base has gone higher than the PWM value, then we also set the output to zero. Uh, and at all of the times we turn on the output pin. So we should be able to program this. And well, firstly, it should build, hopefully. We've got a couple of warnings because I've been playing around with some variables that aren't used. And then we should be able to program it And that's it programmed. So we've got the blinking light here now. So you can see that's flashing at 1 hertz. And we've got our module, which we should be able to plug in here. And yeah, that seems to be working. So you can see it fading the colours in and out. Right, so I've just hooked up the LED tape and I've got a couple of flying leads just sticking out the terminal block for the power supply which we can turn on now and I'll just turn it up to 12 volts. And yeah, that seems to be working absolutely fine. It's drawing about one amp from the power supply. So these MOSFETs aren't dissipating too much power and they're not getting hot in any way. Let's just double check the PWM waveform and just check we're doing the right PWM frequency. 
we'll just use the must tool again. There's only a limited time window to probe. Just because the PWM value changes quite rapidly. But there we go, we can see the waveform there. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, we're just at 386 hertz for the PWM frequency. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. We're getting one step closer to completing the project. I did actually make one little mistake, which I've only just noticed now on this PCB. But if you take a look at the main board, wherever I've got the wires, uh, the solder mask is covering them. On this PCB, I forgot to select the correct type of wire. So we've got these little gold rings all over the PCB. Like I said, it doesn't affect the performance, uh, but it potentially just looks a little bit odd on the board. But I'm really quite happy with how we're going with this project now. Uh, it's just really the firmware now that's going to be holding up things and I do have to build up some more of the PCBs. But uh, hopefully you found this video interesting and useful. If you have any comments don't forget to leave them down below in the comments section. It's always great to read your comments. But until next time, thanks for watching.